This is a grip fit with a nice sharp point and this channel that grips, as the name implies, the aglet, which is the end of the cord. Ply split braiding requires either a three or a four ply tightly twisted cord. The most traditional is a four ply cord and with um, the grip fit, you split the plies so that you have two plies on top of the cord and two plies under the cord. And then pattern is formed by the order in which you pull other cords through that split cord. I learned it probably eight years ago, or I took an introductory class about eight years ago, and then kind of put it aside primarily because the tool that we used to do the splitting of the plies was a latch hook, which really wasn't designed for that, but it was the best thing out there. And I just found it very labor intensive, not very much fun, so I put it aside. And then about six years ago or five years ago, I asked my husband Bill if um, he could make me a better tool. And that kind of launched something that um, has been great fun. A, a grip fit is a tool that's used by ply split braiders uh, to split the plies of a cord, to grip another cord and pull it back through. And it was originally invented by Stuart Granger, who lived in England, and who made decorative knots and published a number of of uh, really great books on how to make fancy knots. And what he did was take a sailor's tool called a fid, it's a very old tool, that was used for splicing ropes and handling the plies of the ropes to do splicing. And he added to near the tip of that tool in the inside uh, a V groove, a jam cleat, that will uh, grip a uh, um, another cord and then when the fid is removed from the original cords we'll pull that cord back through um, and that tool was adapted by Peter Collingwood and others uh, who became interested in ply split braiding after studying uh, the art in India. Um, Granger was one of the few who made such tools, and he made them by taking brass tubing, cutting them to a certain shape, and then basically using a hammer and blacksmithing techniques to close that tube and make a point on the end. And that's the way that grip feeds had been made when Lou uh, first uh, started being interested in ply split braiding. Those tools are not not perfect for the task. They tend to have a burr at the tip where that tube is closed. Uh, they tend to be very laborious and take uh, a long time uh, to make um, and are not very reproducible. So I began experimenting to see if I could make them and I tried a number of ways of varying the way that grip feeds are made uh, and really wasn't very successful until I came across um, some hollow uh, knitting needles that are made in India and using that as a starting point then I get a perfect tip. It's very narrow. Uh, Lou says it's sharp but it's not sharp. It's rounded. It's a very narrow and rounded. And it's, the rounding is important because it's smooth to go through the initial plies. And then my task was to take that and to fashion the uh, cavity that the uh, cord goes inside and the v-groove that acts as the jam cleat to grip that cord as it's being pulled back through. So he, he worked on it for probably nine months until he, he perfected the making of them. And right now I think he's, he probably, there is one other person in the country who makes them but their quality is, does not begin to match his. The guy in Oregon 
abandoned making grip fids by the method of, of Stuart Granger after he saw mine uh, for a long time. He didn't make any at all, and now he, he tries to imitate my method of, of making grip fids. I still think mine are the best, um, but uh, there's always competition to keep you on your toes. Um, but I, I make them in my shop uh, that you have seen, and I sell them on the internet, and the orders are increasing. The, the orders come in every day as if by magic, by email and the wonders of PayPal. And so I've gotten to be very good friends with the post office as I make little packages of grip fids and send them off. We first offered them for sale in April of 2007, and the growth of the sales has been pretty exponential since then. And it started off slow, and every year it goes up uh, an amazing amount.